Although the US team suffered their third consecutive Ryder Cup defeat in Scotland, there were still some good things to emerge from the week, most notably the performance of 24-year-old rookie Patrick Reed. I sat down with him to look back at an impressive week that saw him score three and a half points from four matches. OK, Patrick Reed, thank you so much for joining us once again on Golfing World. Looking back to Glen Eagles, entering the week as a rookie, who did you hope to be playing with? You know, I mean, Captain Watson asked us earlier on in the week. He, uh, he called me and asked who I wanted to play with. And, you know, the two people I thought that I would fit really well with was Jordan as one of them because I, I grew up playing a lot of amateur and junior golf with him. So I was very comfortable with, you know, playing beside him. I've played a lot of golf, so it was more of a comfort level for me there. And with having Jordan, who's a little bit more even keeled a guy, and me, I'm kind of the guy that, you know, let's go, let's get fired up. And... I felt like once we got out there, we both were playing really well. I was able to fire him up and get him going even, you know, get him going even more. And he was able to kind of bring me back when I needed to get brought back a little bit. And it just seemed to work out extremely well. And, you know, when both of us were playing well and both of us had nothing to lose. And, we, you know, we wanted to go out there and prove to everybody that, you know, the rookies can go get the job done. And, you know, we were able to go do that. Of course, it could have been three out of three together. There was that putt on 16 that I hate to remind you about, and you took it all in jest with the crowd the right. next day. How much have you thought about missing that small putt since and how that was, could have perhaps tarnished slightly your, your record? You know, at the end of the day, I, you know, when I talked to Jordan, I was like, yeah, I mean, I told him I'm sorry about missing that putt and all that stuff. And, you know, at the end of the day, he, he went through about seven or eight holes and he was like, well, here's what I did wrong. And he's like, and then I went through holes. I was like, here's what I did wrong. So at the end of the day, when we were all looking back on it, it wasn't just that putt. Uh, you know, he, he kind of made me realize that, hey, it just wasn't that putt. He's like, yeah, if we would have made that putt, he's like, we would have gone to the next hole. He already had configured out that it was a six iron on 17. After when he was stepping on the tee, the, uh, the other guys went and hit six iron and ended up way short. And then he's like, well, maybe I need to hit hard five. And he hits hard five and barely covers the bunker. So if he doesn't do that, you know, if we make that putt, we go first, we're going to be the ones short. They're going to be the ones on the green. So you, who knows? And, you know, at the end of the day, we played great. We didn't lose a point. And, uh, you know, it, just, it was a fun week. Then you went on to produce what's becoming an iconic gesture, the Patrick Reed uh, in sign, which was a fantastic thing to see from getting both sides riled up. Is that something you planned to do, or is that something that just came out at the moment on the seventh green? Yeah, I mean, playing with Henrik, he's a good friend of mine, and we were both kind of playing the crowd for the first six holes. You know, whenever someone would win a putt or, you know, make a putt or win the hole, we would do something to get the crowd going. And that time he makes a putt, gave a good fist pump, the crowd went absolutely nuts. I made the putt, I was like, you know, I'm going to get both crowds going because we had three sections of U.S. guys around there and then you had a thousand European fans. And so I was like, all right, what can I do? And when I made it, that was the first thing that came to my mind. And, you know, all around, it just seemed like the crowds got louder on both sides. And even when I would hit a good shot, the crowds would go, you know, even the European fans would go nuts. And, you know, that's what I mean, it, it's great because it was a bunch of just, you know, respectful fun back and forth and at the end of the day once we finished the matches you know every time I was walking around they're going shh to me and you know they're clapping and laughing we we're all laughing about it both back and forth at each other and you know it's a lot of fun. So Patrick you became the leading American point scorer three and a half points out of four you've backed up all your claims you must be a very satisfied man looking back on what you achieved at Glen Eagles. Yeah you know I'm satisfied with how I played you know at the end of the day I'm there representing the country and playing, you know, for Captain Watson and my team. And but at the end of the day, we're still we still weren't satisfied that we brought home the cup. So we have some work to do, and our team, all of us, do. So we're going to go back, get some work done. Hopefully, in two years, we can change it up. So just very last question: What do you think the Americans need to do to win the Ryder Cup back? Is it to do with how you play foursomes? Is it to do with how you pick the captain, or is it to do with the team spirit in general? It's not the captain. It's not the team spirit. It's whoever wins the most points. And at the end of the day, you know, our foursomes, we didn't play well. And, you know, that to me is on, on us. At the end of the day, whoever hits the golf shots, you have to hit a good golf shot. You have to make a good putt. You can't put your, play, your own player in a bad position. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you need 12 guys who are playing solid at that, that one week. And unfortunately, we fell short. A roll on Hazel team. Yep. <laughs>